Well, our daughter has done it again. Today, we're gonna show you how to make a flourless chocolate cake. What's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews and we do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we bring you a new delicious dessert, you'll be alerted to it. So today we are going to make a flourless keto chocolate cake. And this recipe comes from our daughter, Michelle, who loves to support our goals and thought a flourless cake would be perfect on keto. And she actually has always enjoyed flourless cakes because she likes her chocolate and this helps you get right to it. Well, one of the things that I love about flourless cakes, especially on keto, is the fact that number one, a lot of people do have nut allergies. So when you have a recipe that's calling for a lot of almond flour, they can't indulge in it. The other thing is, is that we forget that almond flour is ground up almonds. And a lot of them. So when you start making a lot of recipes with almond flour, you're adding in a tremendous amount of fat, a tremendous amount of carbs, and a tremendous amount of calories. So having something that's flourless kind of eliminates that big portion of it. Now I do want to say this cake is not that fluffy birthday cake that you may have had pre-keto. This is more of a combination of a lava cake like and a, a brownie. brownie. It's super moist and fudgy on the inside. But that's the type of cake that I really enjoyed. Like if we would go to Outback Steakhouse, I always got like the chocolate thunder from down under. It's kind of like that cake. Mm -hmm. And I think that it pairs fantastic with the ice cream that we make in our creamy. Yeah, and the nice thing about this is, is it is super rich. So you don't need a big giant piece. You're gonna be satisfied with just a small thing. Now, I do want to say this is a super easy recipe to make. How easy is it? It is so easy that even Rachel could make it. Wow. I'm excited about this one because I do love chocolate cake and I would love to be able to serve this at our next fat family gathering and not rely on somebody like Michelle who cooks better than me to bring it to the family gathering. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is go preheat your oven to 350 degrees. So let's get into the ingredients we're going to need. The first thing we're going to obviously need is some chocolate. And what we're going to do is we're going to use some just baking chips. You can pretty much use any brand you want, so long as they're keto friendly. Personally, stay away from things like just the sugar-free Hershey ones because they usually have maltitol. You want to look for like these stevia sweetened ones. You can get the ones from Chop Zero. You can get these Lily's ones. You can even get these, uh, we get these at Walmart, Walmart. Uh, these Bake Believe ones. Uh, I really, really like these. So we're going to use some chocolate chips and you can use dark or milk, whichever kind you want. Next thing we're going to need is some cocoa powder. Chocolate. Then we're going to need some kind of a sweetener. And you can use any kind you want. You can use a resveratrol or bocha sweet. Uh, I really like allulose because allulose acts the most like sugar. The biggest downside of allulose is the fact that it's only 70% as sweet as sugar. But because we're using a bunch of chocolate chips, you're not going to really need to up the sweetness anymore. But if you really wanted to up the sweetness, you can always add in a little bit of liquid sucralose or a little bit of liquid stevia. Uh, a lot of people do ask what brand allulose do we use? Whichever one is cheapest on Amazon at the time that I need. We are not uh, brand loyal. The biggest thing you wanna do is look for one that the only ingredient is allulose. Some of the ones that you're gonna find either in the store or on Amazon are allulose mixed with other things. And you wanna look at the ingredient label and the only thing you see is allulose. The two brands that we use the most are It's Just Allulose Sweetener and also this company here, which I like, they, they go All You Lose brand of allulose. So I, I kind of like that. And these are generally the cheapest. The key to buying allulose, especially on Amazon, is don't buy a little bag. You pay a lot more money. For example, the It's Just, if you buy the like 12 ounce bag, 
it's like a dollar fifty an ounce, but if you buy this two pound bag, it's like sixty one cents an ounce. So wow. buy the bigger bag, you will go through it, and you will save a lot of money. Uh, next thing we need is some vanilla extract. Yum. We need some red mineral salt or any kind of salt, but we're always going to tell you red men because it's the best. We need a couple of sticks of butter, salted, and then we need a whole bunch of eggs. We've got six Huge. eggs here. Look at the size of well, that. Some of them are big, some of them are small. So I got some small ones from the backyard, and then we wow. supplement it with some eggs. These these came from a pterodactyl, Trader Joe's, and we had gotten them. I like to buy the jumbo eggs to make our uh, PSMF bread, Maria Emmerich's bread. So that's all the ingredients. Let's put all this stuff to the side, and we'll get into it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is a bowl, and this is really, really easy. What you're going to do is you're going to take two cups of chocolate chips, dump them in the bowl, and I do want to say the link for this recipe with all of the nutrition information is down below. Just keep this in mind. The nutrition information is going to change based on what you use. So if you use Lily's chocolate chips, it may have new, different nutrition information than if you use, for example, Chalk Zero or Big Believe. So what you want to do is go ahead into your tracking app and enter everything in as a recipe. If you're using Chronometer and are following this exact, using the same ones we have, if you have the gold membership, you can friend request two crazy ketos at gmail.com. And then all you have to do is type in flourless chocolate cake dash 2KK and everything will be imported right into your Chronometer. So next thing you're going to do is take two sticks of butter and you're going to put them into the bowl with the chocolate chips. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take this over to your microwave and you are going to melt the chocolate and the butter. And what you want to do is I usually set it for two minutes, then stop every 30 seconds and give it a stir so that you don't overcook the chocolate. Now that we've got everything melted, what we're going to do is we're going to add in three quarters of a cup of our sweetener. And again, we're using allulose. A half a teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of vanilla. We're gonna take a mixer, and you could do this in a stand as well. I just only wanna use one bowl, and go ahead and blend everything up. Okay, once everything is all mixed up, what we're gonna do is we're going to add in our eggs one at a time. So we'll go ahead and get the mixer started and I'll crack the eggs in for you. Hey, Miss Lefty, use your right hand. There you go. Okay, so once everything is fully <laughs> incorporated and everything is nice and creamy, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in our cocoa powder and we're gonna add it in slowly while we're beating the mixture. Now what you wanna do here is start it on low so that you're not spraying the cocoa powder all over the place and you wanna get everything mixed in but don't over mix it. So just get everything really blended. So get it up on a high, make sure everything's fully incorporated and then you're gonna be good. Okay, so once everything is completely mixed, what we can do is get whatever chocolate's left on those. And then what you can do is take a spatula and just kind of scrape down the sides and give it one more good mix to make sure nothing was like sticking to the edges of the bowl and didn't get incorporated. This is a fun way to get your eggs in. Oh yeah, because you're dealing with a lot of eggs. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a pan 
and you can either use a square pan or a round pan. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lightly coat the bottom with a little bit of like some kind of a grease. You can use butter, you can use the spray avocado oil. And once you have some kind of a grease on the bottom to prevent it from sticking, what we're gonna do is simply take the batter and pour it in here. Now, one thing is this is a lot thicker than a traditional cake batter. So you're gonna have to kind of put it in and then spread it out a little bit. Oof, it's almost like frosting. Yeah, it's very, very, very thick. Sorry if you can't see it, it's just no easy way to I get know. it in without it not, you know, being in the way of the camera. Now this is where if you have little kids, they can clean out the bowl. <laughs> right. <laughs> so long as you don't mind raw eggs, which I don't. Oh yeah, there you go. Mm. Fudgy oh, yeah. deliciousness. That tastes so stinking good. So go ahead and just smooth it all out the best you can. You can even give it a little tap if you want to make sure you've got all your air bubbles tapped. Just don't break your granite. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the oven 350 degrees for about 25 minutes and you want it to be slightly jiggly in the middle. So we actually already jiggly have in the one middle. It's already made, uh, but I overcooked it a little bit. And what happens if you overcook it, it will crack on the top. It still tastes delicious. It's just got that crack on the top of the cake. So we're gonna go ahead and stick this in the oven and we'll be back in 25 minutes. Okay, cake is done. Now we were actually in the process of filming another video. <laughs> and so the timer went off. We quickly turned off the oven, but I left it in the oven. So even here, it was probably in the oven just a couple minutes too long. And you could see it did develop a little crack, but that's okay. That's just visual. It's not affecting the taste. We didn't burn it or anything like that. So again, I'm gonna leave a link down below for the recipe along with all the nutrition information. Again, I wanna say this is very rich. So. We're going to attempt to cut this into 16 pieces. I think 16, right? Yeah. So, so we're gonna go, let's see. Oh, yeah. I like that. That would be four. Four and four. And then we're gonna go four again. I am never good at getting this perfect. So somebody ends up always with bigger pieces. You don't want me serving your wedding cake. <laughs> you just don't. Oh, it cuts so easy. Like butter. Oh, yeah, we got some that are really big and some that are really small. That's just us. I want this one right there. Okay, well, we need to go into the edge because it. it's too, I, who else has a problem trying to get the first piece of pie or cake out? Is it just me? Yep, it's just you. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go ahead and attempt to pull this piece out. You oh, look, I did it. it. And there we go, look at that. That is nice and poofy. Okay, so we'll push this off to the side. Oh, wow. You ready? Yep, wanna dink it? I definitely wanna dink this. Oh yeah. That nice and warm. Here we dink. go. Mm. Oh my gosh. Mm. Fluffy, soft pillows of chocolate. The inside, it's like pillowy. Yeah. But melts in your mouth. It absolutely melts it in your mouth. It is so, so good. Stinking good. Let us know down in the comment section if you make this. Let us know what kind of changes would you make to it. Maybe add some nuts into it or something like that. Sure. You could even use like the vanilla chips. Oh, instead yeah. Instead of chocolate. Still use the cocoa powder but just use the vanilla and that'll kind of change up the flavor profile. I was gonna say bit. you could use butterscotch chips too. Oh, that would be good. Okay, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over there. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we've got cake, you'll be alerted to Till it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.